If you find an ahistorical individual, you found someone who is a fool dangling. And when you find a fool dangling, they will fall for any trick. And so if they don't think they're connected to the civil rights movement or the African independence movement or the freedom efforts of people in, in Latin America or anywhere else, then they are connected to something. And there is this whole notion that we can have a dangling individual who is just being themselves as they express themselves, which is a foolish individual. Because if they're dangling themselves and, and expressing themselves, let them do it in a language that they create. Let them do it with cameras that they invent. Let them do it with cultural references that they somehow uh, imagine. And I guarantee you that nobody else in the world will be able to relate to it. Because what we actually do is communicate with people. But we don't communicate with people simply by our own imagination. Our imagination is in the shadow of the past. So if you think you have no connection to these things, that may be only a reflection of your ignorance. And if you want to express that ignorance, go ahead. And it will look beautiful in Hollywood terms, or it will look beautiful in some disconnected, misdirected kind of artistic expression of your own personal idiosyncrasies. So I don't believe in that. that. That whole idea is nonsense to me that you could have someone who expresses their individuality. That's a foolishness of America which attempts to hide that we are influenced by society. In other words, we get raised by wolves. I think that there is a desire to express a voice which is minimalized and not given the freedom of expression unless it is mimicked. Uh, you know, unless it is mimicry, that is mimicking like Hollywood or, or something like that. And so for me, the, the best uh, films that are African films, just if we just look at Africa, are those films which break that mode of, of thinking. So, you know, when I see uh, Tukibuki or uh, Zala or uh, Camp de Torre or uh, Teza more recently or De Manzan uh, more recently, those are films to me which are not trying to replicate uh, an old model but are trying to ask the audience, challenge the audience of appreciating an aesthetic which is grounded in an expression of the African voice. And you find the same thing in the United States, you know, with the uh, Los Angeles uh, revolutionary films, you know, with Julie Dash and those folks. And you find a similar movement in Brazil with the uh, Cinema Nouveau movement. And there, I mean, however long it lasted, the expression of just kind of an agenda, which is very different, you know. I mean, this is not an agenda which is a black uh, Orpheus. This is an agenda which is can we. We express something here which is actually responsive to the cultural existence uh, and the political existence and the economic existence of a group of people which is primarily marginalized wherever they are. They are marginalized in Brazil. They are marginalized in the United States. They are marginalized in Africa. So, you know, some of even the more recent films, you know, I look at the film on Fanon made by the brother out of, out of Britain, uh, you know, that this, this is a very powerful film and it doesn't follow the models of the Holly, typical Hollywood film, if you will, but it is demanding that we take pause to think and consider of different things which might have gone into the mind of making somebody like Fanon, who many people would claim is influencing their film. This is the bit that interests Fanon because he sees, of course, that the colonizer colonized relationship is a struggle to the death. And indeed, in his life, he pursues it to the death. At the same time, he sees it is also a struggle by the slave to win recognition and also the dependency of the master on the recognition from the slave.
what Fano says is, in the colonized colonial relationship, there is no recognition going on. And that's why Fano is concerned that racism depersonalizes. It is a denial of recognition. It is the master saying, I do not see you at all. It influences the Battle of Algiers because the guy was like, this is what I was reading. This was powerful. And he was part of the Algerian Revolution. Everybody knew it, so it had a profound impact on him. But where did these kinds of revolutionary writings of Amy Césaire, of Malcolm X, of Dr. King, of all these people, how did that influence the conceptualization of what is black film? I don't think my skin color comes into a calculation when I'm making a decision about what I'm going to do intellectually. I don't look down and say, okay, I'm black, now I gotta think this way. I think the culmination of all of my experiences and everything I've been through and what I know about the world shapes my opinions about what I'm going to do. And so I don't think that that means that I do it as a black filmmaker or as an African-American filmmaker or an African diaspora filmmaker or what have you. Now, I happen to be in those communities. So I am a filmmaker who is defined by that community experience, defined by those experiences of those people. However, really what we are doing is reshaping what film is about. I think that's the important thing to understand. Other words, you limit yourself. If you're only doing something that's going to affect uh, black film, then you've limited yourself to influencing only black film. What about all film? What, ha what was the impact of Tuki Buki on all film? What was the impact of the uh, uh, Daughters of the Dust on all film? What was the impact? You see what I'm saying? Killing, what, how did Killing of the Sheep affect all film is really what we need to understand because it needs to transform all film. Why? Because most film is racist. Okay, so it needs some improvement. It needs some intellectual improvement, it needs some cultural improvement, it needs some aesthetic improvement. It needs improvement at all kinds of levels because all it is doing, it is not elevating people, it is not uh, even entertaining them in a positive way because often people leave a film with a negative idea about something and not even a true idea that elevates their consciousness about anything. So in reality, if you ask me, an important thing to recognize as a filmmaker is that here you are a human being placed on planet Earth at this time. Understand who you are. Understand how you got identified that way. And you can't walk around the street with no identity, being a Mongol. You don't do that. People don't say, okay, what are you, Mongol? Let's put down Mong. No, they don't even need to ask you. They know who you are by looking at you because your identity isn't only determined by you. It is determined by society. It is how society identifies you. So as a black filmmaker, it doesn't mean that you only make film that is black. What it means is that your film is coming out of this community, but this community needs to transform the world because the world needs transformation. My name is Takufu Zuberi and you're watching Real Black. Michael Jackson, huh? A child. His mind was a child. Mm. Hmm? Came one of the most powerful human beings in the world, and they killed him. See, we were beating the man. And so I call it rioting in the movie theater because this was rioting without destroying anything. 